from a working perspective, what's the difference between air dried and kiln dried? Well, air dried in the state of Pennsylvania will go down to about 12%. That's the best that you could lay it outside for 30 years, it'll still never get below 12%. And that is good for many projects. For years, we only used air dried because we didn't have central heating, we had pot belly stoves. But with the advent of central heating, we have to dry our wood to six to eight percent and we're at the virtually artificial dry in kilns to bring it to a content that is suitable for use indoors right now i've heard that if you're air drying it you're allowing one year for every inch right All right now in a kiln how long let's say would it take to dry a one inch thick board well uh, depending upon species a poplar can dry in my kilns. There's kilns that dry a lot faster than I have very slow speed, slower speed kilns. A uh, poplar will dry in a kiln in, in about 14 days from dead green to, to dry to 6 to 8%. Air drying poplar might be six months. It's a faster drying. The year per inch of thickness is a good old standard. Uh. Walnut, cherry, uh, the oaks, a year per inch of thickness. I always leave my oak and this walnut that we just showed you, uh, that's going to lay for a year for at least before I, I put it in the kiln and then I'll finish it off. Uh -huh. And it'll only be in that kiln maybe a week uh -huh. to get it from the 12% down to the 6, six to 8. So the air dried stuff is stickered and stacked and, the, and this here is where you kiln dry the material. Well this is just, a, this is a mini kiln. I bought this for small batches such as the small batch of walnut I just showed you. I have bigger kilns uh, up back. Uh, but this is basically the science of a kiln. There's nothing more than an area to stack wood, a bank of fans, a way to extract the moisture, which are fans blowing the moisture out, and a heat source. So, yeah, Mary will get that one. So you see the fans, baffles to make the air go through the pile of wood, and there, it's a hot water heater. And how many board feet can you get in here? This is a mini kiln that only holds about 450. I bought this for the application. I bought this to do like turning squares and things that would be uh, senseless to tie up my other kilns for a long period of time because they're three inches thick and it takes a lot of time. Uh -huh. So I could stack a lot of turning squares or something and just let this one cook at a lower expense than the big kilns. So oh, this is the the the, uh, the other kiln, the large kiln. Yes, this is the this is my main large kiln. And it basically, we load it by stacking the wood on these rollers and we push it in like a big pizza oven. And it's the same as the other kiln. It has a bank of fans. There's a pile of ash that I have dried. So this is dried, ready to be pulled out. Yes, this has been in here 22 days, I believe it was. See the boards toward the top? See how twisted they were? Because they had the most heat. Obviously, the most heat toward the top, it dried fast. That board will be a short. It'll yeah. what's, get cut down. What's the down. board foot capacity of this one? This one will hold around uh, 16 to 1800 board feet. Oh. And and the length? I could draw an 18 foot long piece, but usually I will load it with an eight and an eight, uh -huh. or a 12 and a four. Any combination thereof. Simplest possible way I tell people to dry wood is to get a box, insulate it, put a fan in there, get a little some kind of a heat heater, the fans your air structure, a little heater, and home dehumidifier. Home dehumidifier will extract the moisture mm -hmm. that is sweating. The wood in the he insulated heated box oh. is sweating. The fans blowing the air through the pile, and the dehumidifier removes the moisture. And a very easy way to make a kiln. Mm -hmm. This stack is, is stickered, and so mm -hmm. what the sticks are, what, like three quarters square? Correct. And you're spacing them, what, uh, 20 inches, 24 inches uh, apart? 24, usually I, I do uh, every two feet. Hardwoods do two feet. Softwoods are usually more like 18 inches when you have pines and spruces and softwoods. But the trick of drying, and when I get people coming all the time, they bring their own trees. I do a lot of sawing of their trees. I teach them how to dry. Now I can take you to the final thing. They air dry, the big thing is every two feet, a lot of times they'll just put up sticker at each end and one in the middle and they'll have nothing but sag, sag lumber. Here if you look at this, this has been dried for a year already and the boards are relatively flat because we put the stickers as close to the end as you can get. I wish these were a little more because the checks will go in as far as the sticker. Hmm. 
And then the other thing is um, after you air dry it, what do you do? I want kill dried lumber. Well, you can bring it into your heated shop and right. stick it in the corner or somewhere. And it, if your shop is heated, it will lower down to 6 to 8% just as if it were in a kiln. There's nothing magical about a kiln. It's only a, a, sor a source to lower the moisture content. Now, I'm running my thumbnail across here. Is this, are, did you coat the end? I coat, way? yes. It's a waxy coating uh, product that I've gotten for years um, that uh, seals the ends. I seal the logs first. Uh, then when I saw the lumber, I'm not here painting the end of oh. <laughs> each board, you know. So when it's sawed, it has the, the sealer already on it. It does a, a good job at restricting severe checks. First off, you get your bottom of the pile level. You want a very flat area. Here we're drying inside. Later we'll show you where I dry outside. Inside is not always the best. People say, I have a nice place in my basement. There's no air circulation. This is an open-ended shed. Air can come in here and blow. Wind and air circulation at this point are the most important thing. Best drying months in Pennsylvania here are March and, and April, the wind's blowing, it's the kite flying season. Mm -hmm. You need air circulation. If you don't have air circulation, I've had people put it in their basement and they put a big box fan in front of it and keep the air moving through it because the water is migrating from the wood to the surface, the air blows it off. Heat helps make the wood, water migrate out of the wood. So thus the whole concept between, behind drying, heat and air circulation. People make a mistake drying it. I got this great place in my attic. I said, no. Why? He says, it's really warm. I said, no, because you're, you're going to dry it too fast. They want to throw it in their attic and inject too much heat right away. It's the worst thing they can do. Yeah. You, you bring it gentle. The best time to put wood up is sometimes in the winter months. It's slower drying. I, see, I build these. Remember I said about the plane? I build those, those metal racks. These are... They're welded steel uh, frames that are serving as a, like a platform, right? Yep, I made these frames to, to make it easier for me to make a level, a flat stack. This is just utility. I don't have a skirt around it. They're, they're virtually uh, landscapers' skirts around the piles that keep the wood fresh looking. It's called Shade Cloth, a company. There's the pile drying. If you look at what I do is we stack the wood on, on the, the frame. We put a tin cover. I make this frame of tin on top to keep the rain from coming and wetting the pile. And if you have water coming in on the pile, it'll hold between the sticker and the boards and you'll have nothing but sticker stain. You heard me mention that earlier, maybe. Uh, and you'll have nice marks every two foot. So now you cut all your nice eight foot boards or into two foot lengths, which is a real loser. So by putting this mesh cloth around here, it kind of it allows air to go through, but it repels the rain so we don't get these piles wet. So I can leave their virtually portable garages with which air drying, it's outside. The wind can go through here well. The rain is kept off with the tin and it, it's worked well for us. So the boards stacked here will remain here for, what are they, like two inches? Well, yeah, that's at least a year and a half because it, your theory of a, inch, uh, a year per inch of thickness, and that would be uh, before I even think of drying this in a kiln, it'll be, it'll be a year and a half. Some woodworkers uh, have a preference for air dried over kiln dried. Do they believe that one oh, yes. is better than the other? Yeah, uh, someone like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people who like to work hand tools uh -huh. like the feel it is a lot more live feel of uh, the moisture content being 12 it, it, it with hand tools uh, carvers especially may like air dried it just has a nicer feel it's not as brittle or dusty or as dry uh -huh. and, and crispy uh -huh. it's, it has a smoother more of a soapy feel when using hand tools and uh Really, uh, I think people get overboard with kiln dried. There's a lot of situations. I had kiln dried wood one time. I, I had, yeah, overly kiln dried wood. Uh -huh. I built something in a laundry room that had a lot of moisture. Uh -huh. I would have been smarter to use air dried lumber uh -huh. because all the doors swelled up and I had to move the hinges to make them fit again uh -huh. because my wood was over dry. Uh -huh. So the, the secret is matching the end use with the, with the dryness. Uh -huh.